Are you prepared for the unexpected? When disaster strikes, will your community system stand strong? Here is what you need to know. These videos help the stakeholders and community understand all perspectives and work together to build a community-based coalition to improve resiliency. My name is Cedric Scott. I'm the Fire Chief and Emergency Management Director for the City of Albany and all of Doherty County, Georgia. Uh, we have a dedicated team of people who have just devoted themselves, you know, to the study of disasters and how communities deal with these very difficult situations. Most people believe sometimes only happen on TV, the fact that what we have gone through as a community, the flooding, Hurricane Michael, COVID-19, uh, all of these are things that we have had to endure as a community. It really takes everyone contributing in, in their own way uh, to handle disasters when they occur. And our role is to be to coordinate that and be an assistance uh, to anybody that we can be before, during, and after those times. But you just take FEMA, for example. They determine what the need is. They give it to the local EOC. The EOC puts it in a computer system, routes it to the state emergency operations center. That whatever the needs are coordinated, and then that's then given back to uh, provided to Phoebe Putney. So uh, exercises are part of emergency management, whether they are whether they're tabletop planning exercise or actually a full scale exercise. What we get, what we're able to do is take what we've learned in the classroom and put that in place in your community to make a difference in the lives of, of the people you serve. We will come to any group, civic group, church group, neighborhood association, homeowner association, and give a whole presentation, just reduce the likelihood of you being affected by what is getting ready to happen. Or in some cases, even put yourself in a position where you're not affected by, for example, if we're flooding. That is probably our biggest challenge is just encouraging people to prepare for disasters. So having a good fire escape plan, having a fire extinguisher, uh, not driving through flooded out roadways, you know, uh, turn around, don't drown and be prepared to to go on your own for a few days, uh, having water, making sure that we have uh, no weather radios. So now you can stay in contact and you can hear messages and uh, information about where a shelter is, where a powering station is, where food may be distributed. You can pick up valuable information by being notified of what's going on through cold red. I was around uh, the 1994 floods. And people were resilient. The next morning we woke up, we was rescuing people because they didn't leave. Remember 1994? You know people. We had people lost loved ones. And when we heard about the last storm, it was going to produce a certain amount of rain. We was like, oh, if it comes this fast and hang up north of us, we in trouble. I have an emergency management director and an emergency management team, emergency operations plan in place, and we are ready to deal with this emergency. We may not know everything right now, but what we don't know, we know how to get the answers to what we don't know. We're just uh, very thankful to be able to do what we do every day uh, and provide this service to our citizens. View the story map to dive deeper into the playbook, which guides our actions to arrive at a more resilient and sustainable future. In the summer of 1994, Tropical Storm Alberto devastated southwest Georgia. This disaster was not just a natural calamity. It was a profound civic crisis. The first responders have not forgotten the lessons and are better prepared for the next crisis. Together, we are building a community-based coalition to improve our resilience. Thank <laughs> you.